Taken across Australia during the, the uh, state's pre-elections earlier this year, the New South Wales Premier Neville Wren was voted Australia's most popular politician. And the campaign commercials told the story here. Be Wren, 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 cause he's the right man, Wren, Wren, you know he's got a great state. When you consider we used to have the highest unemployment, and now we've got the lowest. Well, it's just got to be. Wren, 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 cause he's the right man. Well, in September this year, that popularity was reinforced when he was re-elected back into office for the next three years by an overwhelming margin that was termed a landslide victory. Did that land over there? Yes, it did, right. It's a pleasure to welcome him tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the premier of New South Wales, Neville Rand. Say hello. Huh? <laughs> In all the years that I've lived here and everything, I never had you on the program. I'm uh, really amazed at that today when we were, we were discussing it, you know. Nice to have you here. Well, I come down the night before the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Better go home early in the morning. You're not going to stay for the Cup? Well, it's a disgrace, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not that bad, but I mean, yeah. Do you, have you gone to Melbourne Cups before? Undoubtedly. Yes, uh, yes I've been yeah. to a few Melbourne Cups. Indeed, uh, you know, there's a lot of rivalry between Sydney and Melbourne, but mm -hmm. I must say this. Melbourne's got the big two spectacular sporting events. That's the Melbourne Cup and the VFL final. There's no doubt about that. They sure do. I think. I'm sorry to say it. You're a rugby league supporter, you know. It, but it is the truth, isn't it? I mean, uh, I have never... Uh, when I tell people in other parts of the world that we have a horse race here that stops the country cold, uh, my first year here in 1965 was in Sydney, and the race went... The race started, and I saw it taxi cabs pulling over to the side of the street and buses stopping <laughs> and I thought this is really something you know an amazing sure. event isn't it yeah well it's very much uh, Australia mm. um, we Australians have got uh, lots of uh, lots of great things going for us and uh, one of the few days of the year that brings Australians together is Melbourne Cup Day mm. and uh, it's part of our history and I think it's wonderful the way in which we keep it up each year and the way it's going uh, well, I saw all your uh, clairvoyance. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's still as hard to pick as ever. When we get to the, just before we leave and say goodbye tonight, I'll ask you for your tip. Hold on to it, okay? okay. You must have one. Uh, your throat problems, of course, were very well publicized. Uh, your voice went totally, completely. Sure. Um, and of course, the, the prophets of doom were out in full force saying that's the end of Neville Rand. He's finished now. He can't talk. Uh, yeah. what, did that ever worry you? Did you ever think maybe this was it, that you were finished? Well... For a short time I did, um, because quite apart from being a politician, I'm a barrister, so uh, mm. I really need a voice either to uh, be in politics or practice my profession, and for many weeks I had no voice at all, and uh, for a week or so no one really knew why I didn't have a voice, mm. and uh, it turned out to be a fairly had you seen, you saw experts and things at that time while you were no, going through No, I was, uh, I was in hospital for a fairly minor operation, and... Uh, and uh, I lost my voice. And it was really the end of a long chain of events. Uh, I had a paralysis of a cord that mm. just slipped sideways so that instead of the two cords sitting like that, when you speak, your cords vibrate. Mm. One of my cords was pushed well away from center so that the air just rushed through and then you had that <laughs> sort of uh, effect. Yeah. And that's, uh, well, I must say it was uh, a bit depressing for a while. But then... Uh, but you never panicked about it. You never thought this could be the finish. Oh, no. No way. I don't think uh, in this day and age with mechanical things with your body that it's ever the finish. The doctors are so clever now mm -hmm. that uh, they can't altogether give you a new head, but they can uh, <laughs> uh, do a lot of other things. There's a lot of other parts can be replaced. Yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, Tom. But, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I had a very good doctor and... Uh, and a lot of support from a lot of people. Mm. People were very, very kind at that time. And now I'm pleased to say, whilst uh, I can't yet sing Rigoletto and don't yeah. think I ever will, <laughs> I've got a passable sort of a voice. Mm. 
You must have been very pleased with this election result. I mean, this was an absolute landslide for you. Uh, it, um, when you're a politician, I read an article, and I, I must quote the article, because he said that you promised 22 things and uh, you didn't come good on 10 of them, which is a great uh, feat for a politician. Uh, when you make politicians, as a politician, you make promises. Uh, uh, how many of those, do you make those with the idea in your mind that you're going to keep them or to win course, votes? Or? Of course. You always, uh, when you make the promise, hope that you're going to keep the promise. Indeed, you expect to keep the promise. Uh, and I think most people, irrespective of their political persuasion, whether they're Labor, Liberal, I don't count the country party so much, but uh, uh, Labor and Liberal, they try to do what they say. And uh, there are all sorts of circumstances intervene. And uh, it might be uh, interest rates go up, uh, the capacity to raise loans uh, becomes difficult, or priorities change. Mm. and you find that you've got to spend more money in one direction than you intended to, so you've got to take it from somewhere else because running a government is uh, very much like a household budget. You've got so much money to spend and you can only do so much with it each year and you've got to determine what's the sensible way to do it. It always confuses me that some people be able, seem to be able to handle that and other people seem to not be able to handle it at all and just come up with excuses. I want to talk to you about image as well. You've got a great image. You dress very well. Is there someone uh, take the time with you or do you do that on your own? I mean, do you have somebody that has an overall look no, at you and say you need to change The only, the only uh, uh, thing about my dress uh, that's uh, not my selection are my ties. My wife picks my ties. All right. But, uh, Jill. Yeah. Right. We, uh, you, uh, you came up with, uh, or someone came up with a nickname for you, and of course it was publicized all across the country on one of the greatest nights in Australia, which was a command performance. Uh, well, I just want you to see this here. Have a look at sure. this. Here. Have we got it? Hmm. How do you like it so far? Is it all right? Well, <laughs> I look good. I, guess. I think you look terrific, and I think it's great for you. Have a cheer it goes. <laughs> right, okay. I admit there might be the odd VIP here. I noticed one odd VIP as I walked in. Neville Rand, the Premier of New South Wales. How you going, Nifty? <laughs> now, there was an argument going on today as to whether Nifty was your nickname before or did Paul just give you that? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I got that nickname uh, donkeys years ago when I, was, uh, when I was a young barrister. And uh, Hang on. What is this? Where we can see for ourselves up close what a shifty lot they were. Uh, present, uh, present company uh, accepted, of course. <laughs> Pity, it's got a nice ring to it, hasn't it? Shifty nifty. <laughs> you keep turning up at these dudes, mate, you're going to become a regular part of me act. Uh, he's great, Paul. Uh, Paul, Paul, Paul really has a way of hitting it right on the head for Australians. We were talking the other day about he is a real Australian comic, you know, and he just gets into those things everybody else seems to bypass. Tell me about the nifty thing, I'm sorry. Well, that was a long time ago, long before I got into politics, but because now that I, uh, I attract uh, much more public attention as a politician, the nickname's better known, but it was, uh, it was a solicitor. Didn't brief me very much, but uh, he often appeared in cases instructing other barristers against me, and he was a sort of uh, character who had a nickname for everybody. I became Nifty. Uh, Jim McClelland, who was then uh, a solicitor, later Senator Jim McClelland, then uh, he's now Mr. Justice McClelland. He became Diamond Jim. Uh, John Kerr, in those days, uh, was a QC. He became Long John Silver because he had this big mop of white hair. And lived up to uh, it. And yes, lived sir. up to it. Yes. <laughs> I better not say much. Yes, I, no, I don't no. want it to. Uh, <laughs> then there was a judge who had a sort of a pencil moustache, you know, those pencil line moustaches yeah. and a big white beard. And this uh, solicitor character called him uh, the Captain from Castile. Ah. <laughs> so he had a nickname for everybody, and I, uh, I scored nifty, <laughs> and uh, it rather stuck. Uh, I must talk to you about the uh, casinos. Sure. Uh, you just made a momentous decision, or at least uh, took a step forward into that sure. direction. Uh, Mr. Peterson, of course, has uh, said time and time again there will be no casinos in Queensland. Uh, down here, this has been a, a, uh, uh, a big battle down here, of course, a lot of political upheaval. And you've just gone ahead and said, well, we're going to look into the possibilities, and we think, or you are positive that you are going oh, no. to go ahead with... Uh, no. uh, the situation is that uh, uh, Queensland, although Mr. Peterson for a long time said there'd be no casinos there, 
has now decided there will be casinos, and they're in the process of uh, selecting uh, the uh, uh, companies which will run the casinos. Mm. Uh, there are casinos in Tasmania, uh, Northern Territory, Central Australia. There's an application for a casino in uh, the Australian Capital Territory, Canberra. And, uh, but not in the two biggest states in Australia. I think it's the, the point that I'm getting states. at. I can't believe And in our state, we've, uh, for donkey's years, we've had this flare up from time to time uh, about illegal casinos. And for a long time, I've taken the view that the best way to get rid of the problem of illegal casinos is to have legal casinos. Mm. In that way, the public and the general public doesn't gamble in casinos much at all, as far as I'm aware. It's generally speaking, uh, uh, people with a, more money than the average, uh, professional gamblers, uh, people out on the town for a big night out, tourists particularly uh, seem to uh, uh, like a uh, gambling night. And uh, uh, the decision that we've taken is uh, that we'll uh, certainly have legalised casinos in New South Wales. Uh, we don't know quite what form they'll take yet, uh, we had a, an inquiry up there. The judge uh, recommended uh, it be on the lines of the London casinos that are smaller places uh, with no entertainment, uh, no uh, function rooms and so on. I don't know that that had appealed to Australians at this stage. Uh, and, and since the judge recommended the London system, uh, the London system has come into some notoriety itself uh, because there have been all sorts of suggestions they were breaking the law. Mm. and. Uh, well, talking, talking about the law-breaking, yep. too, the, there were the, the uh, Anglican Dean of Sydney today, uh, Lance Shilton, said casinos and SP betting will become a bonanza to organize crime and a handout to the racing lobby. Yeah. Uh, well, can I say, I just don't follow that at all, because does anyone suggest that federal hotels who run, who run uh, Rest Point in uh, Hobart are uh, organized crime? No, they're definitely uh, that, not. Uh, they're I in know. some lobby. Uh, it's just crazy. If you get people, if you get a corporation, that's uh, known, that's respected, got a good record. Why should there be any talk of organised crime? And I mm. think uh, there's too much loose talk. Of course we've got organised crime in Australia. Of course we've got bad criminals. No city like Melbourne with three million people, no city like Sydney with three and a half million people can expect not to have crime, can expect not to have people who are prepared to take risks for big money. And uh, I believe that uh, too much attention is uh, being paid to this so-called organized crime uh, from the pulpit sometimes and not enough attention to the real crime of drugs and drug addiction and the uh, and the sort of crime that's eating away at our young people and indeed killing many of them mm. and uh, uh, if the state can have reputable people running gambling, if the state can run gambling, then I can't see why there should be any organized crime associated with it. I know it's a big income in Nevada because uh, it practically supports the state. What do you reckon, just on a, a rough estimate, what do you reckon the state would make out of um, uh, gambling casinos uh, in New South Wales? Well, I would hope within a very short space of time of making 20 to $30 million, but uh, that's only in a short space of time. It depends how many uh, casinos you had. Uh, we wouldn't want to have many of them to start off with because mm. we'd want to walk before we ran. We'd want to know uh, uh, what our capacity is to run them. Uh, we'd want to know what's a fair share of the revenue for the public because uh, it's going to be a revenue that goes into the public accounts and to be expended on, uh, on public uh, needs and services. Uh, but from any point of view, it must be very substantial money. You're going to find out pretty quick whether it's a popular move or not, aren't yeah. you? Well, but it's, a, it's a pretty bold step for you to take, I think. Well, generally speaking, the surveys, and I'm, I watch the surveys fairly closely, the surveys show that more Australians think uh, casino gambling should be legal than not. In other words, there's a majority for legalisation. That doesn't mean that a majority of Australians would go to casinos. I don't believe they would any more than when uh, we... Uh, legalized Sunday hotel trading in New South Wales. Everybody in New South Wales goes to a hotel on Sundays. Mm. But there are some people who go to a hotel on Sundays. Who's going to win the Melbourne Cup? Well, that's a difficult question, but uh, I think it'll be a Sydney, Quinella, Kingston town and uh, just a dash. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Say hello to your daughter, Kim, for okay. me. Tell her I spent a whole lot of time. Neville Rand, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with another piece from the Cambridge Footlighter. Stay here. Yeah. Okay.